Shimai. Today we're going to have a look at the U or Taxus Bacata or in Welsh Owen. Um, and I'm very fortunate, I've been invited to St Ilchtid's Church in Mamilad to look at one of the most magnificent specimens of yew trees that we've got in all of Monmouthshire. And actually one that um, is, is fabulous in all of, of Wales and Britain. Um, Yew trees are uh, one of our oldest living trees um, and they're the most mysterious and sacred of all of our native trees. Um, and it's one of only three native conifers that we have in Britain. Um, it's often found in churchyards as we are here and quite often, as with this one, will predate the church itself. So this was growing long before the church was built. Yews are small, um, generally quite small, evergreen, bushy, um, shrubby trees uh, and they're very, very slow growing. These here, they can grow to about 25 metres tall um, and normally I say an age to them, absolutely impossible. I mean, it's predicted that this one behind us, or guessed at, that it's about um, two and a half thousand, well, between two and two and a half thousand years old. And there's even reported to be one in um, Discoid in Powys that's reputed to be over 5,000 years old. So you can see their longevity is massive, massive. Now yew trees are um, very tolerant of shade and, and although they're growing here in an open space, they will grow um, in the understory of, of native woodlands um, and, and can be found in, in lots of woodland because they will cope with that shade of the, of the taller trees. Uh, they're very deep rooted so don't often get blown over, uh, and it, which is unusual for for conifers, they can be coppiced. Now we've talked about coppicing before where it's cut down to ground level um, and it will sprout back up. They're also very, very good for making hedges and in formal gardens and, and old estate grounds, you'll, you'll see beautifully um, sort of trimmed yew hedges. Now yews, like I say, can grow to a, a massive age and they're only considered really to be an ancient tree when they reach about 900 years old. Okay, so the Mamilad yew, uh, it, it could be a, an entire video in itself. It is absolutely fascinating. Like I said, the popular opinion is that it's around about two and a half thousand years old. It measures 9.53, give or take um, 9.53 meters in circumference, uh, which is about 31 feet and three inches. Um, and it's one of six big ancient yews within this churchyard here. Um, and back in 1895, there were actually 12 yew trees and, and over time they've, they've died off and, and like I said, they're down to six now. But in 1799, this particular one was recorded by Archdeacon Cox. Um, and you can see it's still here and looking strong today. Now this one in particular, it's very difficult. It looks like several um, that have sprouted up from the ground and it's up on a small stone mound, but actually it was one colossal tree and the bowl, the inside of the tree has rotted away, but these edges have basically continued to grow and, and they look like separate trees in themselves, but, it, but it's not. Um, and if you walk around the churchyard, there are other, not as big and not as old, but other really big, beautiful yew trees. Okay, so we're on the opposite side of the tree now. The church is, is just over there. Um, and we're going to have a quick look at the bark. Now, the bark of yew trees is, is quite an obvious one. It's, it's like a, um, a thin reddish or grey brown, and it's smooth and flaky, as you can see here. Um, the wood inside is one of the most magnificent colours that you'll see. It's just fabulous and it can range from creams to pinks and oranges and reds and purples. Um, and it is it's just absolutely beautiful as a wood. Yew trees have needles that are one to three centimetres long. Um, have a look right there and about two to three millimetres wide. They're flat and soft and, and finely pointed. I think you can just see there. And they're shiny and dark green above and the undersides, as you can see there, are just slightly pale green. And the needles, believe it or not, last on, on them for about five to 10 years. Um, 
and they're a good food for certain caterpillars um, and in particular the satin beauty moth. Yew trees flower between March and April um, and they will have male and female flowers on different trees and they're tiny and they appear along the leaf stalk here um, and they grow in sort of two rows on either side but what they turn into is these absolutely beautiful beautiful red berries between September and sort of October time and you can see here the red berries on these yew trees. Um, they're green at first um, and then they turn sort of dark brown and hard inside. Now that's the berry itself um, but you can see the seed there just by there is the seed and that then turns into this red berry here um, and the seed is surrounded by what they call this this red berry is they call it a, um, an aril it's a fleshy cup that's bright red and it's between eight to ten millimeters um, across and this is green at first and then will turn um, into this beautiful bright red berry Now on a serious note, all parts of the yew trees are, are poisonous. They contain um, a substance called taxane, which is a poisonous alkaloid. Um, and actually, except from this red fleshy part of the seed, um, everything is poisonous. But this red fleshy part isn't poisonous. Uh, but the actual seed inside is poisonous. So again, you've got to be really, really careful with it. Um, the name Taxus ex itself um, from Taxus Picata comes from tax, uh, Toxus, uh, which means an arrow, since the Celts used to use arrows poisoned with yew juice, which acts as a nerve poison. So you can see it's very serious. But interestingly, um, yew trees are poisonous to cattle and horses. Um, though sheep, goats and deer seem immune to the toxic, toxic effect, um, which affects your heart and your circulation. Um, now birds thoroughly enjoy these seeds. Um, uh, blackbirds, thrushes, field fares and red wings. And they will disperse the seeds. They will eat these with that seed. They'll eat that red fleshy part. Um, and the, with the seed inside and then they'll obviously it'll pass through them and they'll deposit that elsewhere and up will spring new yew trees. Okay, so yew trees um, are very, very common in churchyards and there's, there's lots of reasons for it. I mean, they were respected and, and sort of admired and, and, and worshipped really by um, pre-Christian um, beliefs by Druids uh, and lots of these churches sprang up because the yew trees were already there, not the yew trees planted into churchyards. Now there's um, reasons why they were planted um, or, or they were in these places. Because they're evergreen, um, they were a good place to shelter, so in, in poor weather. And quite often in churchyards, you'll notice that one is generally along the path like this, and there's usually some by the gateways. And that was to pro provide shelter for, um, you know, during services or, unfortunately for things like funerals whilst the pallbearers were, were getting ready to carry the coffin in um, but also it's because they were they were planted because of this um, because they were poisonous to, to sheep and cattle to prevent grazing around the churchyards um, so the wood of the yew tree is is like i said it's beautiful it had lots and lots of uses and one of the things from history that it quite often comes up is its use as a longbow because the heartwood is like a reddish orangey color the soft wood uh, sorry the sapwood is like a whitish color and they work differently now the sapwood is very good at flexing so this outer white one is very good at flexing so can can withstand sort of elasticity uh, elastic sort of pressures on it and the heartwood is very good at withstanding compression so if a bow was made out of it a long bow and you pulled it back like that it would bend in this kind of arch and the, the sapwood the white sapwood would be able to bend backwards like that the orange heartwood would be able to compress but then it wants to spring back into shape so it would have this catapulting bow and arrow effect and it would fire it off um, but interestingly uh, most of the best yews didn't come from um, British 
uh, yew trees, it was imported Spanish and Italian uh, yew wood that made the best bows. Um, but the wood itself as well, it is beautiful, the grain in it, the colouring, so it's also used for, for furniture, um, it's very durable uh, and it's said that um, a post of yew will outlast a post of iron because it, it really doesn't rot very well. It makes a very good firewood as well. Um, and also, we, we talked about its poisonous characteristics, and it is very poisonous. But interestingly now, the poison, um, there's a, a medicine called Taxol that's been um, created. It's a, it's a natural chemical that occurs within the leaves. And it can be, it's found to be effective against particular cancers. Um, and now it's a licensed medicine. Now, one of the oldest um, artifacts found in wood originates from a yew tree um, and it's a, an old um, spearhead that dates back around about 450,000 years. Um, I mean that's difficult to get your head around really when you think that you know we've got yew trees here that are sort of two and a half thousand years old that seems really old to us but I mean 450,000 years is colossal. Now yew trees have a lot of lore and a lot of myths um, linked to them and actually way more again than I can fit into, into a short video. But they are seen as a guardian of the dead due to them being grown in, in, um, in churchyards and also a sign of renewal and stability due to their longevity because they, um, they last a long time and also because they're evergreen. You know, in the winter, now we're sort of heading into winter, everything's losing their leaves and yet you are staying green and producing those beautiful red berries. Um, and it was considered unlucky to damage or chop them down, um, especially when they're located on spiritual sites such as this. They were sacred to druids um, and planted by their temples. And this is what I'm saying. These were generally sites of worship long before um, Christianity came to our shores and, and churches were built. Um, and it was said to keep away evil forces and protect the church from high winds. Now, some ancestors believed that the roots preyed on the dead bodies um, buried in the ground. Um, but obviously, um, you know, the roots uh, are just growing in the ground as would any other tree. Um, now, it's often given uh, on Palm Sunday branches, uh, and it was another reason why it was in churchyard, because the, the evergreen branches would be given out on Palm Sunday um, and used for good luck. And it's also said that one of the the sort of scary aspects is that it's said that witches and ghosts and demons are supposed to hide in the dark, dark branches. But also, it's said that it, you is the best wood for making wands. Has lots of magical power, I guess. Okay, before we finish, um, I just thought it might be nice because not everybody's going to have the, the opportunity to come to St. Ilfid's to have a look at this beautiful yew tree. We'll just have a quick wander around. So, oh. and you can see how the dead wood is in it. There's a dead branch by there. Um, and also, the mound that it's on down by here, surrounded by stones. Now, like I said, it's very difficult to age ancient um, yew trees because the middles will rot out, such as this. Yet they will continue to grow and to live. But this really is fa fabulous, fabulous tree. I mean, if you ever get a chance to come and visit it, you really, really should. But um, not just here in St. Ilfid's. I mean, there are fabulous yew trees, um, well, throughout Monmouthshire, all around. So, and, and also anywhere you live, I guess. Um, so get yourselves out there, go and visit these beautiful yew trees and good luck.